Today on Studio G, the community held a candlelight vigil for the passing of a Fest Middle School student. Also, the Fortress celebrates Autism Awareness Day. Stick around, Studio G starts right now. Welcome to Studio G. I'm Lorenzo Torino. And I'm Meredith Hall. Last week, a 12-year-old boy was killed while jaywalking across a valley roadway. Reporter Alex Whipple has more. Last Monday, March 25th, a 12-year-old boy was killed walking home from Fest Middle School. Jonathan Smith was crossing Fort Apache Road onto Arby Avenue across from Wet n Wild when he was hit by a car. He later died at Southern Hills Hospital. A candlelight vigil was held for Smith on Wednesday, March 27th at Fest Park. Students and faculty of Fest Middle School attended to pay their respects to Smith and his family. Due to strong winds, those who attended the vigil were asked to raise their flashlights to spread Smith's light throughout the park. Friends and family joked that Smith was the breeze blowing out candles due to his funny prankster personality. He was nothing short of a gentle breeze, so I know these gusts of winds is him blowing out these candles. <laughs> He's doing something up there, something crazy, and he's looking down at us, and he's going to be like, I'm going to blow out all these candles, but I still love you all. Smith's elementary school principal, Mr. Davis, attended the vigil and explained that Smith will always be a Tanaka dragon. While he doesn't even attend Tanaka anymore, he's still very much a part of our school and, and forever will be. Friends of Smith explained that they are thankful for the community and their time with Johnny. I'm thankful for every moment shared with him. I'm thankful to each and every member of this community, the way that we all galvanized together. Johnny was a very good friend, but not just to the other kids my age and his age, also to my little brother. He involved everybody. No matter who said not to, he was always there. The tragic loss of another life on Valley Roads is a reminder to use caution when crossing the street and to always use a crosswalk. I'm Alex Whipple for Studio G. Make sure to be aware of your surroundings and always use designated crosswalks. Last night, the Vegas Golden Knights celebrated Autism Awareness Day at the Fortress. The Knights invited children with autism to T-Mobile Arena to get the night started with a celebratory puck drop and a quick stick and puck during intermission. The team donated $25,000 to the families for the effective autism treatment. Also, congratulations to the Knights for clinching pl a playoff spot in their second year in a row. We wish them luck during the first round against the San Jose Sharks. Tonight, the Alumni Reading Series will be taking place in the Beverly Rogers Literature and Law Building in Room 101 from 7 to 8 p.m. Alyssa Nutting will be talking about her highly recognized novel, Nutting, is the author of Tampa, Unclean Jobs for Women and Girls, and Made for Love, Nutting, who compelled her PhD under a Black Mountain Institute Fellowship, returns to UNLV for reading and discussion. Unclean Jobs for Women and Girls won the Starchendome Prize for Innovative Fiction. Made for Love was also named Best Book of 2019 by GQ, NPR, Huffington Post, Electric Literature, and The New Yorker. This event is free and open to the public, but RSVP is required through the Black Mountain Institute. To RSVP, go to Evan Bright and search alumni reading service, Alyssa Nutting. Coming up, Brookings Institute is taking an in-depth look at the opioid epidemic affecting the United States. Also, UNLV wants your feedback on improving student life on campus. We'll be right back. Stay with us. The name of my show is Love Styles with Danny D, and I talk about um, love and relationships, the love songs. I'll do all genres of love from like back to the 60s to today. It's basically 
what I like, and so I figured other people might like it too. My name is Danny D. My show is Love Styles with Danny D. You can listen to it on Sundays from 6 to 7 on therebelhd2.com. Rebels took the championship. KUMV is a good family. Uh, it's fun. The shows that are on it are creative. You can come up with your own show. It's really eclectic and um, creative and interesting. That's what I like about it. We are a platform that opens doors for everybody. We don't limit from what I've seen so far. There's no limit to what we can't do here. I love their open door policy. Everyone is there to help you out. If there's something that you don't quite understand or remember, you can come in and ask. They'll show you how to do what needs to be done to make your radio show smooth. So expand your mind, expand your knowledge base, and get involved. It's a lot of fun. As part of the Brookings Scholar Lecture Series, Brookings Mountain West invites you to a lecture titled The U.S. Opioid Academic and Lessons for the World. This is by Senior Fellow in Foreign Policy Center for the 21st Century Security and Intelligence, Vonda Philab brown The United States and Canada, now ravaged by an epidemic of opioid addiction and drug overdoses, unmatched by their respective histories and the foreign policy implications of the crisis. Those are not widely understood. The legal prescription opioid industry is weakly regulated and bears primary responsibility for initiating the epidemic. The proliferation of illicit synthetic opioids such as fentanyl fuels the epidemic and is a harbinger, is a harbinger for a broader cause, a broader change in drug markets. What role should the United States play in this global encounter? Narcotics regime and how do drug control objectives mesh with other U.S. foreign policy priorities. This lecture will conclude with the policy recommendations for how the United States should deal with the opioid epidemic at home and abroad. This event is free and open to the public. If you're interested, the event is tomorrow from 6 to 7 p.m. in Greenspun Hall. Big changes are coming to UNLV as the school is looking to expand one of the busiest parts of campus. Kaja Doros has more. UNLV Student Union is a place for students to study, grab lunch, and relax between classes. But as a school continues to grow, space becomes limited. Student Union and Event Services Director John Tucker explains how the school is planning on making some changes. Uh, so about a year ago we did a student survey of uh, UNLV students and asked them how many of you experienced the student union as being too crowded, how many of you wanted to expand. And so we received 3,000 replies, and of those 3,000, 80% of them said to expand the student union. The school has hired an architect design team to investigate how to improve the space and function of the student union while also catering to the needs of the students. It was too crowded, that the lines were too long, there was no place to sit, so you found yourselves being in a position where uh, you just avoided coming here. The student union was updated about 12 years ago and is currently about half the size it should be to support the amount of students attending UNLV. We want to have this student union be what students want it to be, which is a place you can sit down, which is a place you can meet people. It's got quiet areas and study rooms and lounges and you know areas where you can be noisy and stuff where you can get food and not have to wait in really long lines to do that. And then you can sit down and connect the school wants to get as many students as they can to participate and contribute ideas about what changes should be made to the student union and wants to relay that no suggestion is an invalid one. So we've heard student feedback saying they would love to have like a pub on campus, a sit down restaurant. No idea is out of the range of possibility for us. It just becomes a matter of how do we fit all of that together and do it in an economically viable way. The architect design team will be on campus about once a month to conduct surveys and hold open student forums. And in September, the school will hold a student vote to decide on the final student union changes. 
it'll be a student run student focused project meeting student needs and so the students should vote on it for studio g i'm kaja doros come down to the student union open to see open feedback form in the Peta Plaza on Thursday at 11 a.m. to let the architect design team know what changes you would want to see. And focus group meetings will be held throughout the day on Thursday and Friday on the second floor of the student union for specific student groups like U.S. Dining and international students. Things are really starting to heat up around the Las Vegas Valley. Arturo Sanchez will have your weekly weather update when we come back. The ISM hour. It's a talk show. So uh, we talk about all the isms, uh, recidivism, racism, sexism, capitalism, corporatism, etc. One reason why we chose this show is just to be able to talk about the many different isms that are out there that are troubling society and they need to be talked about. We're dropping some knowledge, basically. <laughs> I'm Alligator. And I'm Jeff F. And the name of our show is The Ism Hour. You can listen to us on Fridays at 3 p.m. on the rebelhd2.com. The number one thing I like about KUNV is it enables an individual to express their passion and grow and share that passion with others. It's a wonderful gift that's shared by KUNV with students and community members alike. I love them because they gave me this opportunity and I love the way they are representing the community and giving people from the community a chance to come in and, you know, do whatever they got to do with their music. I love KUV, I love being here and I love the people that I'm working with and uh, finally getting my chance to finally work in radio, which I've been wanting to do since I was a kid. So I'm very happy here. You'll really have the chance to grow and, and learn about radio from very good DJs and from, from management. We are here and you can be here too. KUNV is a great place to be. Welcome back to Studio G. Temperatures are finally starting to warm up around the valley. Arturo, am I gonna be able to go swimming yet? Meredith, not just yet, but right now we have, we're in about the 71 right now with a high of 80 and it's going to be a low of 54. It's kind of breezy tonight and there's going to be a lot of dust. <laughs> so make sure to wear some su glasses, sunglasses, whatever, Just protect your eyes to make sure you don't get that dust in your eyes. And then we're going to see our five day forecast we have here. It's going to be mostly sunny the whole week with our um, average weather raging in between the late 70s and early 80s with our lows being in the high 50s. And then, as you can see, it's the national weather um, map, we can see that it's kind of raging lows and highs with the median of 70 degrees being the average high for the national weather. Right now in the valley, we have Centennial being around 70 degrees, Las, North Las Vegas being as well as 72, and the whole valley staying in that mid-70s mark. This morning on campus on UNLV, we, had a, we have currently a 75 degree um, with a visibility of 10 miles per hour. It is a little, there is a lot of wind gust, I'll tell you that, with 14 miles um, currently, and it's going to be raging up to 37 miles per hour tonight, so it's going to be extremely windy. And then like t tonight, like I said, we're 55 degrees. We're going to be staying in there for the entire week in the, those mid-50s with a humidity of 15% 15, 15 reaching up to 37 miles per hour. And so it is going to be extremely windy. Like I said, make sure you grab your coats. Make sure your contacts don't fall out because that's happened to me for some reason. So make sure you are wearing something to protect your eyes. And if it's, it's going to get a little chilly with that wind. And so for today, we're going to have a word of the day. And, you know, since we go to school, you know, we're learning. And so our word of the day is fantod. And so fantod is the state of irri irritability and having tension. And so to use it in a word, in a sentence, you're going to say, people who pronounce my name wrong give me the fantods. 
And that's it for your weekly weather. Thanks. And we're going to go back to Lorenzo at the desk. <laughs> Thanks, Arturo. Don't go anywhere. After the break, we sit down with journalism grad student Ellie Wonoski. Yeah. The name of my show is Shenanigans on the Radio and Praise and Shenanigans on the Radio. Well, both shows are music talk shows. Uh, I bring people in from the community who anybody's doing anything positive, local talent, uh, independent artists. I want the listeners to take away anything that may be helpful to them. Both shows are inspirational. No matter what you do in life, no matter what your dream is, follow it. Never give up on it. My name is Lucius Thompson, a.k.a. The New B. Our whole show is called Praising Shenanigans on the Radio every Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. and Shenanigans on the Radio every Thursday from 7 to 9 p.m. Make sure you tune in on TheRebelHD2.com. My sanctuary for creativity. I be, I'm given an opportunity to come in and use the resources that we have here to create the shows and the broadcasts that we do. It is my favorite creative space to be in. I feel like the station gives students a platform to actually play music and actually a chance to get their hands in the radio industry without having to spend that money. I like KMV. Um, it's a community station. Uh, they opened up the doors to myself, uh, also to other people who who have a dream of, of being in radio or, or whatever the case may be. Have that energy from a city coming back to you while you're on a live broadcast. There's nothing like that feeling. They have producing um, workshops. I got I learned how to actually do play-by-plays for sports events. KNOV has done a lot for me as a student. If you want to do a talk show, a specialty show, music, it doesn't matter. There's a place for you to be able to come and give your voice to our community. Welcome back to Studio D. We have Ellie Wonoski with us today. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so where are you from exactly? I am from Berlin, Germany, born and raised. And uh, yeah, now I'm here. What, what brought you all the way over here to Las Vegas? Um, well, Vegas was actually my third stop. I came to Houston first um, because I got recruited um, by the volleyball team at San Jacinto College in Houston and um, they gave me a full ride and uh, I have been playing volleyball pretty much all my life pretty competitively at home so um, that seemed like the right thing to do to come over here um, get some free education and still play um, didn't like Houston that much to be very honest so I decided to transfer to a division one school in Chicago lived there for two years and then for my senior year, I ended up at UNLV. So um, I got recruited one last time wow. um, by the former head coach, uh, Cindy Fredericks, and played here my last year and then retired um, with my bachelor's degree. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. How long have you been in the U.S.? A total of six years six now. Years. Yeah. How old were you when you came here? 18. 18, okay. Yeah. Wow. So it's been quite a long time, it's, yeah. It's been quite a ride so far, yes. And so you got your bachelor's degree here at UNOV? I finished it up here, exactly. Okay. So I got uh, one last year here, um, took a lot of credits because I transferred quite a bit. So mm -hmm. that um, threw me back a little. So after a bunch of summer classes and I think a semester of like 18 credits. Um, in the spring when I graduated, the, I made it happen to wow, graduate yeah, here. Wow, you made it happen. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. And why, so, and you're doing um, graduate school right now? Exactly. I'm actually almost done. So oh, okay. I am in my final semester, so I've been here in the graduate program uh, for two years. And what, what made you decide to do graduate school here instead of going somewhere else? To be very honest, um, I moved quite a lot and um, it's pretty hard to start over and over again, especially when you don't know anybody. And um, I really, really liked Vegas. I actually kind of fell uh, in love with the community and I had a lot of friends and I didn't want to leave and it didn't feel like I was ready to go back home. So I stayed and might as well do a master's while I'm here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you do as a journalism graduate student? Um, well, I'm a graduate assistant, so I teach, uh, I do my own studies, so for my master thesis, uh, 
Um, I'm conducting a research about the effectiveness of emotional versus rational message framing on brand attachment and brand loyalty. And how's that coming along so far? It's, um, I've been pushing it. Uh, it has to be done in two weeks, so um, it's in, in the final stage. Um, I collected a bunch of data that I now need to analyze, and once that's done, uh, I just need to plug it in and call it a day, yeah. I guess, yeah. <laughs> so what goes in, into a research like that? Like, do you have to really get a lot of, uh, I guess, data? From, are, you just, are you just focusing on students, or you're going overall? No, I'm focusing on students. So you, uh, when you do research like that, you want to make sure that you have um, a certain target group that you're um, conducting your research in. So my target group are undergraduate students um, here at UNLV. And uh, to answer your first question, a lot of work goes into it, um, a lot of uh, research. So you have to uh, establish your grounds first. Um, collect uh, a lot of other research and make sense of it mm -hmm. and then develop your strategies from there. Um, I had a lot of help from my committee members. Um, so I, this is my first experiment ever. So I've never done an experiment uh, before. So I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, but I guess every scholar that starts off like that feels that way. Um, but I had a lot of help. And then as you go, you kind of figure out what steps to take. And since you said you're almost done pretty much with it. Yep. And so looking at, I guess, some of the results you've seen, has it surprised you? Well, I have one more lab day tomorrow where I collect uh, data. I've looked over um, a few here and there, but I have not actually run any results. So um, we'll see. I, yeah. I have no answers to that <laughs> yet, but I will. Can uh, students still participate? Yes. Uh, so my last... Uh, my last day is tomorrow. Um, I'll be here in the Greenspan Hall, uh, room 1120, mm -hmm. um, between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. And um, people that are interested can uh, stop by. Uh, it doesn't take very long. It's probably 10 to 15 minutes. Max. And there's also a survey as well? Well, that's the survey. That so is that's the, the survey. That's okay. the experiment, yeah. Uh -huh. So when I talk about experiment, it's not actually like in an experiment, it's the survey that is an experiment because uh -huh. I'm working with okay. human subjects. Oh, yeah. Okay, awesome. That's great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. All right, and when we come back, we will explore another Nevada hidden gem. Stay tuned. Right. Thank you. It's called Frankie's Underground Party. I play just about everything from, uh, from progressive rock music to alternative and indie music. Sometimes I, I'll throw in a little mainstream music. I also play some rarities, lost classics, B-sides that, that nobody don't hear on the radio anymore. My name is Frankie Teardrop and the name of my show is called Frankie's Underground Party. And you can tune in every Saturday nights at 10 p.m. on the rebelhd2.com. KUNV. I feel how I feel about it. It's great. I love it a lot. There's a lot amount of freedom. You can really do basically whatever you want. Very nice facility. Uh, very clean. We have editing booths, st studios for uh, students to practice our craft and to learn more. And KUMV definitely gives us um, insight into what we'll be doing when we get our careers, when, once we graduate. They give us free will and free creativity. I can gain experience to further my career in the radio broadcasting, board operating, to music directing, to even being on air, which is my main goal to do in life. So I can use all that knowledge to put towards my career in radio broadcasting. You will learn so much here at KUMB, and we have a lot to offer. Last time I explored the Goldwell Open Air Art Museum in Rhyolite, Nevada. Our story picks up from there. This week on Desert Gems, I continue north on the US 95 to investigate a mysterious art display of old cars in the middle of the Nevada desert. Music video. After having to ask Richard at the art museum for directions back to the highway because our phones didn't have service, we departed the Goldwell Open Air Art Museum in Rhyolite, Nevada and headed north on the 95 to our next destination, Goldfield, Nevada, and the International Car Forest of the Last Church. 
Yeah, that's the name. Where is it? Is it that one? Yeah, yeah. it's right there. If you blink, you might miss the entrance and will have to double back like I did. From the highway, after you turn down Meyer Street, if you want to call these streets. Take the next left at Crystal Avenue, then turn right at Reed Street. These are roads? These are roads. These are legit roads. These are roads. Okay, slow down a little bit for this corner. You just keep driving down the dirt roads a little ways until you can see the cars. You can't miss them. The car forest is a collaboration between two people, Mark Rippey and Chad Sorg. Rippy, the brains behind the art and longtime resident of Goldfield, Nevada, had an abundance of old cars and wanted to set the world record for the most upturned cars in an art piece. With over 40 cars, vans, limos, trucks, and school buses, they succeeded, beating out Nebraska's car henge for the title. Sorg, a Reno artist, heard about Rippy's unconventional project and relocated his life to Goldfield to help Rippy complete it. The cars are meant to serve as blank canvases for other artists to come by and add to the exhibit. The vehicles are strewn across the property in the rural Nevada desert. Some are plunged nose first into the ground while others are precariously perched on top of one another. Right now I'm sitting in one of 40 cars in the International Car Forest of the Last Church in Goldfield, Nevada. That's about 179 miles outside of Las Vegas. I don't find myself in the middle of the state often, but if you're passing through this area on the 95, the free roadside attraction is definitely worth the stop. There are no signs, no amenities, and typically no other people at the site, making it a perfect little gem in the Nevada desert. Yeah, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's kind of like in the middle of nowhere, and it's it, it's a pretty far drive. It's about a three-hour drive to get out there. It's really interesting that, that you say that because it, it feels like it would be a really long drive. And, you know, seeing all those cars, I mean, did it freak you out at first? No, it's not like the town itself. It was It's a really abandoned town. Like, there's some people who live there. I think I read online there's like 200 people that live there. And... Um, it was just a really interesting place, I think, with a lot of history. So if you're driving by, like if you're on your way to Reno, definitely check it out. It's a really cool, um, it's a cool place to take pictures. If you're into photography, it's a great place to go. But I wouldn't drive all the way out there just for it. Maybe a first date. Yeah, yeah, definitely take a first <laughs> date out there. Maybe a first date. <laughs> all right, well, that's all the time we have for you today. Join us. Thank you for watching and join us here tomorrow on Studio G.